Brazil, a land of sunshine, a land of beaches, the nation of carnival and the home of football. As Brazil prepares to stage the World Cup in 2014, the official view is that everything's going swimmingly. Wow. But is it? When is the stadium going to be ready? Opposition to this global footballing extravaganza is rising. The police have just used pepper spray. The country's dark past is casting a shadow over its gleaming present. I think the Brazilian football is in the hands of a fascist and he has to go right now. And at the forefront of the criticism, this man, Romario, one of Brazil's former sporting gods who swapped his football kit for a politician's suit. So a FIFA vem aqui, monta um estado dentro do nosso estado, sai daqui com um lucro de 2 a 3 bilhões de reais de dólares. E aí? So why is the man who won a World Cup for his country now sticking the boot in to the next one, before a ball has even been kicked? I'm Tim Franks, on The Case in Brazil. Beach life in Rio de Janeiro, the party capital of Brazil. Passers-by stop to take souvenir photos of a global celebrity. No, not the man from the BBC. I've done many things in the name of journalism and in the name of fun, but there's one pursuit I'm not even going to begin to attempt. It's called foot volley, and one of its great exponents is Romario. Life might look like a beach for the one-time World Cup winner, but unlike many a former football star, Romario hasn't gone into management or punditry. Instead, his career path has taken an unlikely trajectory and landed him here, in Brazil's parliament. He's a first-time MP for Rio, where he's won a reputation for being surprisingly outspoken, especially when it comes to the subject of the 2014 World Cup. Mas totalmente desnecessário o que vem acontecendo no Brasil em relação à Copa do Mundo e no Rio de Janeiro em relação às Olimpíadas, um gasto aonde que eu acredito que poderia ser colocado esse dinheiro em várias outras áreas que são muito mais precárias e necessitadas, como educação e saúde, em escola e hospital, para um evento que apenas dura um mês. Então a FIFA vem aqui, monta um estado dentro do nosso estado, é o soberano, está acima da nossa soberania, ganha, sai daqui com um lucro de 2 a 3 bilhões de, reais, de dólares. E aí? E esses elefantes brancos que gastaram um bilhão, Quase dois. One of the main targets for his anger is just down the road from the parliament, the new $600 million national stadium in Brasilia. When we came to look, it was supposed to be ready in just two weeks' time. Wow. More than 4,000 people were working around the clock to deliver this stadium on time. Deadlines have been pushed back repeatedly and costs have rocketed. When is the stadium going to be ready? Agora no dia 21 de abril, no próximo dia 21 de abril, nós teremos a inauguração do estádio. Coincidentemente, é o aniversário da nossa cidade. A cidade vai fazer 53 anos. That's in 12 days time. It, it doesn't look as if it will be ready, but you are confident. 
É, nós temos uma, um prazo apertado, né? Nós temos uma, mas estamos assim dentro do cronograma pré-estabelecido pela FIFA. Brazilian centerpiece did look impressive, but also a lot more than a fortnight away from delivery, and so it proved. The delivery date was missed, as so many others have been in numerous World Cup-related construction projects across the country. Just bad luck or bad organisation. Some critics, like Brazil's top investigative sports journalist, Juca Cafuri, see something else, vested interests at work. This is another way of doing Brazilian things. Diante da possibilidade do atraso, que se dá, é real, é, os organizadores encostam a faca no peito do governo e dizem, vai ser um vexame internacional. E aí forçam o governo a abrir ainda mais os cofres, em regime de urgência, sem licitação, porque há que fazer, tem que fazer de qualquer jeito. Então aí o dinheiro jorra e os fundos de campanha se beneficiam e a, 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 as empreiteiras fazem uma festa, as grandes agências de publicidade também, né? e fica tudo por isso mesmo depois, porque afinal foi preciso. We asked the Brazilian government for an interview. They offered a statement denying any problems. The construction work carried out in the 12 2014 FIFA World Cup arenas are, they said, monitored by the country's control agencies, such as the Federal Accounting Court. To date, the Ministry of Sport is unaware of any kind of pressure coming from the private sector, resulting in a greater investment of public funds. Brazil is not the first country to go over budget hosting big international sports events. But while Romário may appear to be one of the World Cup's most strident critics in Brazil's parliament, he says he's not against the tournament itself, just the way it's run. Na verdade, o melhor para o Brasil é ter a Copa do Mundo, a segunda no caso, a primeira foi em 1950. Mas o que acontece é que por mais que existisse e existem obrigações contratuais FIFA e país sede da Copa, tem coisas que não tem como você aceitar. Eu tenho certeza absoluta. Só que chegaram com 100 aqui, conseguiram 90 e 10 não. Então o, o, o Brasil se arreganhou, abriu as pernas para a FIFA. All World Cups are huge money-making machines for some. The question always, though, is just where public money stops and private profit begins. And nowhere more so than with Brazil's most famous stadium of the lot, the Maracanã in Rio. The public facilities around the Maracanã have, up to now, included a swimming pool, an athletic stadium and a primary school. Up to now, because come the World Cup, the landscape will change. It's lunchtime here at the Friedenreich School in Rio. It's a school named after Brazil's first professional black footballer and it sits right in the shadow of the Maracanã Stadium. But because of all the redevelopment around the Maracanã, this school is going to be demolished probably at the end of the school year to make way for a shopping centre in time for the World Cup. No, no. Sobre uma copinha. Não. Eu não, eu não acho justo isso. Derrubar nossa escola para uma copa. Ah. E o Eduardo Paz, ele quer tirar a escola daqui pra, só por uma copa fraca. E ali também tem uma natação que é muito boa. A swimming pool which has also been earmarked for closure. Eles não se mostram tão empolgados com isso, porque eles já entendem que essa Copa do Mundo no Brasil pode estar destruindo a escola deles. E eles choram, eles chegam chorando, eles se perguntam por quê. Por que um evento né, que poderia ser tão bonito, poderia ser... Todo mundo tem o interesse de assistir um jogo, né, 
uma copa no seu país e, e tá acabando com a escola deles, de repente, por conta disso. The teachers and pupils may feel that they can't do much, but others are trying to make some noise. Cheerful sounds on the street of Rio, but not a terribly cheerful message about how the World Cup redevelopment has come at too much of a cost and that private companies are now going to be reaping the benefit of all this public redevelopment. But interestingly, one of the things that people here are saying is that one of their very few champions inside Congress, inside Parliament, has been a man who they thought was going to be a severe disappointment to the people of Rio, and that's Romario. I can see you're a football supporter. Yeah. What's your team? Vasco da Gama. Oh, okay, so it was Romario's old yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. So what do you make of him now as a politician? Romario is the only one who is talking about the problems we are having here. Uh, I, I didn't expect him to be a very good politician. Uh, but I think he's doing well. Well. Eu não gosto dele assim dentro de de arquibancada. Eu não vou dizer que eu gosto dele porque ele jogou muito contra o meu time. Foi tem uma rivalidade. Mas eu tenho que tem que tem que botar as coisas acima disso pela questão do bem maior do futebol. É que o Maracanã é um bem de todos. É um bem de todos os torcedores cariocas. É, ele está defendendo o Maracanã, então ele está do meu lado. Eu estou do lado dele nessa questão. The demonstration stops next to the local government offices. Inside, the private bid for redeveloping the publicly owned facilities around the Maracanã was being decided. And then the atmosphere changed. What had been a pretty peaceful and happy demonstration has just turned a little bit nasty. The police have just used pepper spray, which is why my nose is streaming. The problem is, is that they, uh, they've allowed the demonstrators to congregate on a pretty narrow and busy street, and there's been a fair amount of push and shove. Police eventually took control and dispersed the crowd, but other protests have ended more violently. For the last 60 years, a museum for Brazil's indigenous peoples has stood next to the Maracanã, but developers wanted to turn it into a museum for the forthcoming Olympics. So riot police were sent in to evict protesters and indigenous tribespeople who'd been trying to save the building by occupying the site for more than six years. The policemen didn't hold back. Big sporting tournaments anywhere in the world cause arguments because of the vast amount of public money poured in. In Brazil, that argument's sharpened because of the huge chasm between rich and poor. It's something Romario knows all about. He came from poverty before reaching dizzying heights of wealth and fame and a reputation as a celebrity bad boy. Romario says his conversion to serious politics dates from the birth of his sixth child, Ive, who has Down syndrome. He says that since then, he's become a political campaigner for social justice. Claro que eu posso escrever perfeitamente, porque eu vivi isso até os 18 anos da minha vida. Meus pais sempre trabalharam muito. Eu e meu irmão tivemos que ajudar meus pais com seus trabalhos. E depois dos oito anos que eu comecei a jogar futebol profissional, comecei a ganhar o meu dinheiro, as coisas começaram a mudar. E é por isso que eu hoje, melhor, eu sempre dei valor a um real. É, eu sei o que, que é, eu sei a dificuldade que é ganhar dinheiro. Romario's birthplace was a shanty town, or favela as they're known here, called Jacarezinho. 
My guide was Serginio, a friend of Romario's from childhood, and now his political secretary and fixer in the poorer districts of Rio. I don't want to get uh, too dewy-eyed about this, but this, these guys are Romario 40 years ago. This is where he learnt his tricks and where he learnt to control the ball with not much room and with just with flip-flops, nutmegs. Are you going to be, are you going to be like Romario when you grow up? <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, so you play play play. Play. Score, score a thousand goals. Também vai fazer mil goals I want to do more than a thousand goals. All right, aiming high. That's good. Over the years, a lot of the Brazilian football squad have come from very poor backgrounds and favelas like this one. So, how much will next year's World Cup benefit such areas? Great. Okay. Então, seria muito importante que todas as autoridades buscassem fatores que realmente deixassem um legado para essas pessoas. Porque, na realidade, as comunidades estão sendo deixadas para segundo plano. E o que a gente vê é toda uma situação comercial sendo colocada à frente até o bem-estar e da qualidade de vida de algumas pessoas. Back in 2008, when Brazil was awarded the World Cup, Jagarazinho, like many favelas, was a no-go zone. Heavily armed drugs gangs ruled. There was law, but it was their law. Many of these favelas have since been pacified in the jargon, cleaned up with military and police units sent in to extend the reach of the state. A lot of the favela residents say that, on balance, it's been a good thing, but it's come at a cost. Some of these slums have been forcibly cleared with the residents pushed out. And the Brazilian police do have a long-standing reputation for violence, going back to a brutal period of the country's history, when Brazil was run as a military dictatorship, spanning two decades from the mid-60s to the 80s. Which is where Romario re-enters. He's had a long-standing feud with the Brazilian Football Federation, the CBF, Last year, he helped chase out the former CBF chief who was accused of corruption. Now, Romario's turned his fire on the new boss, a man called José Maria Marín. In this speech to Congress, Romario is linking Marín to the military dictatorship. Principalmente no momento em que o Brasil se expõe ao mundo ao se preparar para receber mega eventos esportivos. Será que merecemos ter a frente do nosso esporte mais querido, mais popular? um esporte que orgulha o nosso povo, uma pessoa suspeita de envolvimento, ainda que indireto, com torturas, assassinato e a supressão da democracia. Strong words from Romario. So what's the basis for these allegations? In the 1970s, repression reached its peak. Critics of the military dictatorship were rounded up, jailed and tortured. Hundreds were killed. At the time, José Maria Marín was a politician in the São Paulo State Congress. He was a supporter of the dictatorship. In 1975, he made a speech denouncing TV Cultura, a local channel, accusing it of disloyalty, left-wing tendencies and sedition. Que vem pregando apenas fatos negativos, não se vê, não se vê nada do aspecto positivo, apresentando miséria, apresentando problemas e sem apresentar inclusive soluções. É preciso mais do que nunca uma providência a fim de que a trans... TV Cultura was at the time run by this man, a former BBC journalist named Vladimir Herzog. Following Marine's speech, Herzog was called in for questioning by the secret police. Feeling he had nothing to hide, he turned himself in voluntarily. 
it would be a fatal mistake. Over the next 24 hours, Vladimir Herzog was tortured. He died. The police claimed it was suicide, but even their own picture points to a clumsy cover-up. Now, almost 40 years later, Romario has presented a petition to the CBF calling for Marine's removal. The man standing next to him is called Ivo Herzog. He's Vladimir's son. Well, I lost my father when I was nine years old. My brother was seven. My mother was 34. So I personally do feel a lot of anger about that. Right now, that anger is aimed against Jose Maria Marin, because in my understanding and in the understanding of over 50,000 people that signed my petition, he was part of the system that resulted in the torture and assassination of my father and many other people that fought against the military regime in Brazil. I think the Brazilian football is in the hands of a fascist person right now. Uh, the organization of the World Cup is in the hands of a fascist person and he has to go right now. We asked both Jose Maria Marin and the CBF for an interview. Neither was forthcoming. But in the wake of the allegations, the CBF did post a statement on its website describing them as a falsehood and a defamatory campaign. And Marine also has allies in the national parliament. They say that Romario's got it all wrong about the case of Vladimir Herzog. Já estava sendo investigado esse jornalista pela atuação dele na TV Cultura na época. Ela era muito de esquerda, contundente, crítico dos governos da direita. E quando o movimento foi deflagrado, ele foi preso por razão da atuação política dele, jornalista. Não influiu nada o discurso do Marim. How damaging is it for Brazil to have this row about Mr. Marine a year before the World Cup? Eu não, eu não falaria em escândalo, porque a atuação do Marinho é correta. O, o meu companheiro de Câmara Federal, o Romário, foi um grande jogador. Eu torci muitas vezes por ele, mas ele já bateu muita bola fora do gol. E essa foi uma bola fora também contra o Marinho. Because of who he is and what he's achieved in football, Romario is able to confront the rest of Brazil with what he insists is the awkward reality. It's something highly unusual among sports stars here. Football has been used uh, to cover the reality. Uh, in the 70s in Brazil, we were in a very bad political moment, in a very unique economic moment. But everything was fine in Brazil because we were the World Cup champion. We had Pelé, we had all those great football players. These people who play football, they are idols, people love them. But what's their opinion about uh, the issues of our lives, our com community? Uh, they don't have opinions. So they are also responsible for all the corruption that we have in Brazil, all the, all the poor all the issues we have in education, health, and all that stuff. They have the power to help to change that, and they don't use that power. How much are you using that power? A minha responsabilidade de jogar futebol era uma, e e hoje é uma outra é Também eu tenho uma. Eu sempre tive responsabilidade, só que hoje de uma forma diferente. Quem me pagava era uma empresa privada. Hoje quem me paga são, são é a população. Eu não posso jogar o dinheiro dos outros fora. The 2014 World Cup in Brazil will no doubt be a great spectacle and a global party. But inside the country, it's already proving controversial, divisive and extremely expensive. 
It may be a privilege to host football's ultimate tournament, but for Brazil, what will be the cost?